Friday morning here at Watkins Glen. Uh, just going to get the door cards, numbers and stuff on the car. I want to go around it one more time just to check over some things. Um, last night after going through tech, we already found out my fans weren't turning on. That was uh, checking a box in the ECU setup. So I'm glad I brought the computer with for that. And I just want to go around, uh, like I said, get the stickers on. Today's goal is just to try to get some more miles on the car, try to work on the mechanical balance. So I'm not going to run any aero today. Um, the way the new format works with grid life is going to be too practice and one qualifying today. So I really don't have to worry about making a time. I just want to get used to the track and set up the mechanical balance. And then tomorrow I can throw the aero on. We have two more qualifyings and then the podium sprint at the end of the day. So as long as I can put down a time tomorrow, we'll see where I end up. I'm really not too worried about it. Mostly I just want to take the car home in one piece and try to get as much of a good setup on it as I can this weekend. You always see one side of the car at a time, right? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Too late now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that. Not even any wrinkles. So what's the strategy of putting stickers on a race car? Try to make it straight. <laughs> uh, mostly I just keep trying to make sure that the stuff underneath is clean. That way it'll actually stick. Whether or not it's straight is secondary. What does Grant want this morning? Don't let him gaslight you. He's lying. <laughs> <laughs> As you can hear, there's cars on track now. Um, I'm gonna be going out with third group. If you remember from the last video, I was talking about how I wasn't quite getting the full uh, brake pad engagement here on the brake. I did uh, think about it after I left the track the other day when we were testing and I uh, cracked the bleeders and I got a couple air bubbles out of there. So I just did the same thing now this morning. Uh, fronts and backs, I got a couple more air bubbles. Hopefully that'll take care of why my brakes aren't working quite as good as I think they should. So I'll be taking care of that before I go out on uh, track. Just got back in for the first practice session. It is so fast. I mean, new track, so I'm trying to learn that, but I was trying to be really easy on this. And you know, first come around lap, I kind of overshot turn one ain't quite there yet, but I definitely got them bedded in this time, so should be better next round, but oh, it is so fast, like it's, the back end didn't want to step out of me at all, like this three like has got to be the way to go, it had so much rear grip, and I mean I'm just like three quarter throttle, and oh, it's like buck 20 right now, and it's wanting me to be in fifth gear down the front stretch and the back stretch, which would, I mean, probably going to be doing well over 140 if I get up to that. But just still a little cautious about the brakes on this, but oh man, it is so fast in the car right now. <laughs> Alright, since the fronts are working better, I need to add some more rear bias. And hopefully it'll keep getting better too, because that's, I mean, damn, this track is fast. Um, I really want my brakes to be working as well as they can. Checking for any more air bubbles. 
just by cracking them loose and you pump the pedal a little bit there just to get a little fluid there. But yeah, as soon as you crack it, some fluid's gonna flow out and uh, just checking for more air bubbles to make sure these brakes are gonna be perfect. While I'm here, I'll check the suspension stuff too. Everything looks good there. Tonight we'll end up going over it with the wrench and ratchet and make sure everything's absolutely tight. The front here has been good for over a year now. Well, mostly it'll be the rear that I'm going to be worried about today. We'll check the whole car over because I'd rather catch something at night than have a problem tomorrow. After a second practice session, we decided to put the arrow on the car because I was able to get comfortable pushing it. Got it to step out, slide a little bit, so I feel a lot more confident where the limits are and the car was very drivable right up to and even past the limit a little bit. So now I have no problem putting the arrow on. The arrow should keep the balance pretty good because I haven't had to mess with it a whole lot in the last year. Um, it may have a little bit of difference in the rear just because the extra grip, but if anything, it's going to be good because what I lacked before was grip. Drift's out on track now, then we'll be running through with the uh, live stream for each class for time attack, so we'll be out with all the street mod cars. So about, about an hour or so yet before I'm out. And we'll see what we can pick up with there. So far, I've run a 213.5. couple issues going on though. Um, I'm still starving after about four or five uh, hard laps but I mean we're going through almost six gallons a session so it's kind of surprising that's happening but it's something to deal with. They're also uh, wearing through this uh, right rear tire quite a bit. Um, I'm going to run one more session and probably going to have to swap it out because it's probably going to be showing quotes when I come back in.
development that these other guys have to do individually and just spend a lot of time and money on their cars is already done at the factory for them. So, and there's there's something too letting the engineers <laughs> that spend uh, millions of dollars developing the car let yes. them do the dirty work for you. As uh, again, we've got cars on track now in street mod and there's a handful of other drivers in this list including cody smith which everyone has already seen i i looked over it so far that is the oldsmobile cutlass yes yeah, i uh, just he just got real crossed up going through the uh, uh, the uh, inner loop of the bus stop so uh yeah he's getting after it and what i love is you've got the old cutlass you got the amg gts uh subaru wrx's corvettes all of this and a mini cooper s Heck yeah. Heck yeah. <laughs> I love that. I mean, again, we talked about diversity, the, diversity in a class. This is a- Get up on it like he did, and the backside falls off. Uh, as soon as you go to correct, then it wants to snap on you. Yep. And uh, he did everything he could at, at that stage. But uh, it, it just nicked the wall, we think. Here's that cutlass. Yep. And this is where right in this part he got a big lurid moment. Looks like there's still pretty good grip right there. Yeah, and again, the very flat area. The the rumble strips here, you're not driving on them so much as you are hitting them and going over them. Right. Um, whereas turn one, you get up on the exit, and you're driving on the rumble strips. They've got grooves in them that will hold any water. So uh, definitely there it seems a little grippier than the exit of one, but that's a wake-up call for everyone that was following Cal that, hey, all right, we, we see this now. It's a little slippery. Let's be cautious through here. Remember, there's three qualifying sessions, so you got three opportunities, and you don't know what tomorrow holds, as we said, so don't throw it all away, lap one, turn one. But uh, definitely a spooky moment there. And, yeah, uh, absolutely. And we'll see how, uh, how that car is. Hopefully it's just a, a bent splitter rod or something, and it can get back rolling. Well, and we've seen them come back. Uh, I think it was CMP where they uh, missed the entire first session uh, with some issues, came out with uh, like two or three minutes to go, put in a decent lap, came out in the second qualifier, topped it, and ended up in the podium sprint taking a really close second place. So, uh, you know, these teams, they know how to come back from a little adversity. Into turn 10 now, leading the way is Ryan Matthews, a driver that led a lot of the weekend uh, at CMP and didn't have the, the best podium sprint. I think he had a differential issue, and uh, the diff was locked or not unlocking or something of the sort, and he didn't win the weekend but had a great time competing, and he'll be the first one to put down a time here in this session. This will give us a good idea of how slick the track is. A 226, we're way back from where we were. Mike Omick to the top, then Nick Kors. That was quick. And then Ju in the 321 to the top, and then Cody Smith to the top, a 217, 339. get this out of the way. It crashed. It's raining now. It was starting to rain during the session. Had the fastest lap, first lap out of everybody in street mod, but then uh, two laps later I was going for another flyer and uh, all of a sudden I couldn't get stopped and turned. Luckily, I was able to get slowed down. Anyway, I was probably doing a buck 10 into the corner and I just realized I wasn't going to get stopped or turned. So instead of uh, committing to brakes, it would have gone straight nose in. I just got completely off the brakes, took every bit of turning I could get, and I just tagged the wall at the end of the corner. Probably hit it 20, 30 miles an hour. Obviously, the front took the brunt of it. But I mean, completely can't pick, pancake that tire, whole side of the car, wheel stuff. Just. Luckily, the glass didn't shatter out. The window was down. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I drove it back. It seems fine. I think we'll just pull the arrow off and run it tomorrow without arrow. 
So, definitely top five right now, which means I'm in the shootout, unless it dries up and everybody else goes faster tomorrow. So, we'll see, but just really beating myself up right now, but this is what it is. In the car, it's, not, it's definitely not as bad as it could have been. All right, well, it's morning here. Uh, I've already heard another car crunch the wall over there, but uh, yeah, I think we're gonna be able to make some laps today. So it's the plan. Um, it's definitely cold, uh, but yeah, we'll go out and try to make some laps. Currently holding on to fourth. So I mean, apparently my uh, very first lap was the fastest out of everybody in street mod, and that held on for fourth as it continued to deteriorate, even though I was. Uh, up when I hit the wall, but we'll see how today goes. Uh, this morning especially, we're just going to go out and make some laps, try to get comfortable with it, because there's a good chance it's going to be wet all day. Still cold, still wet. Um, I didn't get to go out this morning because uh, apparently my battery clamp failed, and then I melted a ground wire, which you can see here. Ground wire that ground wire that completely melted and it was because that happened if it'll focus focus yeah so that's completely split it screwed up like so all of my uh, battery cranking voltage went through this ground wire so we had to go get parts and I missed first session but it's fine, it's clearly still raining and wet. So, we'll try and make the next one. All right. time. Here is, uh, this is Cody Smith. This looks like we're maybe setting up for a lift session here? Uh, potentially, but uh, Cody Smith crashed this car in what track battle. Great yesterday. looking car. We've yeah. seen some different variations of this car through the years. Uh, a lot of arrow on it at one point in time. Well, we went out for the grip lift session, because otherwise I melted that wire earlier today. But yeah, went out, did a few laps. It's starting to rain harder again. So we'll see how that goes, playing with the brake bias, but this car seems to drive straight and nice. It's just, it's super slick out there. So we'll, uh, we'll see what happens this afternoon for times and whether or not we hang in there for the shootout.
Corvette. Uh, still waiting on Cody Smith and Nick Kors to come back around there. The next group, uh, Smith, fourth seed, seed, Nick Kors, the third seed. Here comes Cody Smith, the 1985 Oldsmobile Cutlass. What a cool car this is. And to make it into this podium sprint big, slip and slide, you see the onboard camera there. <laughs> Look at the interior of this, Greg. This is such a cool shot. That, it really is. I mean, that is a luxury ride from years back, and he is wheeling it here. Ooh, little oversteer there as he went to throttle. Beautiful job. See what he puts up for a number here. Across the stripe for the number 736. It is good enough for a 249.525, so not going to put him on top of the timing and scoring for the street modified category, at least not yet. Maybe lap number two as we wait for the rest of the street mod category, uh, which I see one of them creeping through turn number 10. All right. It's raining, it was super slippery, but made it into the podium sprint. Um, wasn't really able to improve, but I got fifth for the weekend, so that's awesome. Finally got my top five, that's been my goal for two years now. Um, I'm real happy with it, and it's just kind of sketchy conditions out there, but just drove what I was comfortable with, and hey, I got fifth place.